Long Play 4K Review, Call of Duty for Modern Warfare. The Call of Duty series, the main competitor of Spielberg's Medal of Honor, appeared when the territory of World War II shooters was already quite crowded. Infinity Ward came on the scene in 2003 and turned the standard WW2 events into a nuclear-powered action movie. Electronic Arts thought about it and started experimenting with the format, Medal of Honor had a semblance of tactics. But in 2005 there was Call of Duty 2, the authors of which two years in a row honed their own formula and improved the direction. That is, they turned popular sketches on the theme of World War II in an interactive movie. Last year Activision entrusted Call of Duty 3 to its sponsored studio Treyarch. Those honestly worked out all the necessary techniques, it turned out fun, but without the extravaganza. The prequel prudently remained a console exclusive, and never made it to PC. Infinity Ward meanwhile were busy with the fourth part of the series, Modern Warfare, the main theses about which were known at once, Bad Russians, Ideological Terrorist Zigaev with a Nuclear Bomb, The Infamous Town of Pripyat, Brave Soldiers of the American Army and British SAS, Helping Russian Democracy. Red Heat the plot of modern warfare reminds of a quote from Tom Clancy's novel. In some Middle Eastern country, terrorists assassinate the president and take power into their own hands. The U.S. sends its troops there to restore order. At the same time, in Russia, a certain ultranationalist named Imran Zikaev, no, just imagine, the ultranationalist Zikaev, is announced, who threatens a nuclear warhead wants to revive the Soviet Union and even enlists the support of some military officers. To help the official Russian authorities, an elite unit of the British SAS is dispatched, which will have to gallop across the expanses of Russia and the former USSR for almost the whole game. The most surprising thing is that this enthusiastically delusional plot in the warm hands of Infinity Ward unexpectedly acquires not at all naive dramatism. Modern Warfare is the quintessence of rail shooters. It works exactly on the same scheme as it did four years ago, ignoring all modern genre achievements, correct physics, freedom of action, additional hero capabilities. In the intervening time, Infinity Ward have evolved into the best interactive directors to date. Call of Duty 4 is the swan song of scripted action games, where actors play their roles, tanks move out on the command action and we participate, but in no way create the action. Infinity Ward, in other words, did what they do best. The developers don't even try to give us an illusion of freedom, clearly building the play on hard scripts and triggers, demanding from the player only one thing, to trot forward, to dive in time behind the nearest shelters and, of course, to shoot accurately. But Infinity War disguises the modest gameplay capabilities in a way that no one else in the industry knows how to do. Something is constantly happening here, the game burns 10 spectacular frames per second on your retina. Here we are in the role of a British SAS fighter storming a ship with a nuclear warhead, here we are taking our feet off the ship while the water behind our backs is flooding the compartments. The next minute we watch the shooting of the deposed president with his own eyes. And here, already in the guise of an American infantryman, shaking in a helicopter, heading for war, around dozens of tanks, in the sky aviation strikes ground targets. Call of Duty 4 has an incredible, unprecedented density of action and elaboration. Your partners yell something on the air, enemies, screaming in the neighborhood, jump out from every corner, grenades fly from somewhere and at the director's command an imposing mosque tower settles in clouds of smoke. The game picks you up under your arms, twirls you in a dance and does not let you go until the final credits. Infinity War don't leave you alone with the gunfights for a second. Even barring, seemingly, stealth mission for English sniper literally sparks, you crawl on your belly under tanks, merge with grass, hide from Russian patrol and then escape from helicopter and carry your wounded partner out of the battle on your own back. In these moments, somehow you don't really get to think about the fact that all your heroic accomplishments are only thanks to scripts. Plus, Infinity War generate an amazing amount of varied situations. We're constantly changing the roles, and with them, the style of play changes. While the player is in the skin of a SAS fighter, 
On the screen there is natural rainbow 6. Under the flashes of flare grenades we clear the rooms, enemies fall to the floor, partners, obeying, again, scripts, deftly fly into the room, demonstrating a surprisingly well-coordinated work. Quite a different picture when playing as a US infantryman. There are mostly street battles, helicopters barrage in the sky, armored vehicles provide support, a serious, in general, war. Infinity Ward is also very clever at playing on contrasts. For example, when we're in the skin of a special forces officer running around Siberia, it's certainly stressful, we come under fire, the commander's harsh voice crackles in the walkie-talkie, giving out orders, wounded partners yell unprintable. And then, in the next minute, this hell is replaced by a mission in the cozy cabin of the AC-130H Spectre. The airplane is nice warm and safe. Our character is lazily talking with the pilot, joking around, and you are leisurely covering enemy positions with bombs. At the same time, the battle is boiling below, and you understand perfectly well what it is like there. But from a height of several thousand meters, everything is calm and peaceful. Another movie. Single player campaign in Call of Duty 4 is not only a spectacular movie, but also a kind of extended training before the main entertainment multiplayer battles. Despite the enchanting story run, multiplayer is one of the main reasons to buy modern warfare. For one thing, it suddenly becomes clear that the game has extremely dynamic gameplay after all. The size of the maps is relatively small, so when 30 people come together in battle, all hell breaks loose. Grenades fly from all sides, dead comrades fall around, stray bullets pierce the dilapidated walls. The game modeled relatively honest ballistics, you can shoot cardboard and then wood, trying to catch you too. The atmosphere is extremely tense. Secondly, to make it more fun for us, the authors came up with an interestingly organized career ladder. For participating in battles, completing missions and killing enemies you get experience points and rise in rank. There are 55 levels in total, and believe me, that's a lot. The main trick is that each level opens new bonuses. For example, having risen 4 levels, you can create your own classes of fighters. If by default there are only 4 of them in the game, then you can make 5 more. In addition, as a reward for a new level are given special skills. There are a lot of things connected with them in Call of Duty 4. Total skills almost 30 pieces, one more useful than the other. Thanks to them increases the armor of the soldier, you can carry more grenades, increases firepower and so on. Each class can have only 3 skills, so when forming your fighter, you have to think hard. Finally, the main incentive to build your career is new weapons and gadgets. The further you go, the more powerful guns you get in your warehouse. Being in the rank of general, you can shoot from the best automatic rifles. Screw a sniper sight to any weapon or equip it with a silencer. But the most powerful features are available only to the masters of the game. The thing is that during each round for certain achievements, say, killing three enemies in a row, you are rewarded with some super trick, you can call satellite reconnaissance, shows all enemies on the radar, call an attack helicopter, the wind machine hovers over the map for some time, shooting the unwanted or bomb enemy positions with aviation. In general, having passed the single player campaign, never throw away the disc with the game, the whole potential of Call of Duty 4 is revealed in multiplayer battles. Checked. The main Russian word. The theme chosen by the developers, bad Russians and everything that follows from here, had a significant impact on the whole game. While you will make a rally on snowy post-Soviet expanses with a machine gun, you will find a lot of interesting things. For example, the store Elizevsky in the remote Azerbaijani mountains. Inscriptions like this territory is patrolled by military dogs or pushed to open. But, of course, the hit of the season is the famous Russian three-letter word written in Arshan letters on all fences and walls more or less suitable for this purpose. However, not all Russians in modern warfare are bad. SAS fighters are assisted by a certain Sergeant Komarov, who for some reason is dressed in a traffic police uniform, but commands the special forces. Despite the weirdness of the clothes, the character turned out to be memorable, almost Schwarzenegger's Ivan Danko from Red Heat. 
technically Call of Duty 4 looks good, but mainly because of explosions and other pyrotechnics. While shells are bursting around, tanks are burning, and bullets pierce the dilapidated walls, everything is very spectacular. But in the moments of calmness weak textures and low-level detail become noticeable. On the other hand, the animation and character models are excellent. The soldiers run very naturally, jump behind the shelters, cling to the walls, and generally behave as if they were alive. Modern Warfare is actually a landmark project. First of all, according to Infinity Ward, this is the last installment of the series they had a hand in. Secondly, Call of Duty 4 is the farewell release of scripted shooters. Modern Warfare is a production of such crushing power that there's simply no further to go. The future is definitely for games like Crisis, for freedom, for complex internals. But Call of Duty 4 walks away very nicely. Crisis, for all its conceptual breakthroughs, doesn't contain half the drive that Modern Warfare gives you in the first five minutes. It's like breaking up with a wrong lifestyle. With our minds we understand that we should eat fruits and vegetables, but we go in for fries and a giant can of Coca-Cola to say goodbye. P.S. Be sure to wait until the end of the end credits. You'll get a pleasant surprise there. The average player goes through the story campaign of Call of Duty 4 in 5 hours. However, the people from Infinity Ward managed to cram into these 5 hours so many gorgeous battle scenes that could easily be enough for a dozen or two Michael Bay movies. Well, a dozen, maybe not, but for a couple of Pearl Harbor will be enough for sure. Here are just 10 moments from the game, during which our editorial staff sat at the monitors with bulging eyes and dreamily whispered ah, you're a fucking man. Attention, if you are suddenly afraid of spoilers, it is better not to read this text. Shoot. Right during the opening credits, two tough men put you in a car, drive you through the streets of some city and there's a war going on, then put eat you up against a pole and shoot you in front of the TV cameras, and all this with a view out of your eyes. Without a doubt, one of the best scenes in the world's gaming world. Want some? Ushanki, Telnyashki and Matryoshka dolls, Russian theme is revealed in Call of Duty 4 according to all the canons of action movies of the 80s. One of the first Russian special forces, which you will meet in the game, walks staggering along the corridor, shouting songs and waving a half-empty bottle of vodka in his hand. On Lenin's places. We're afraid to say it ourselves, but Pripyat turned out to be much more natural in Call of Duty 4 than even in Stalker. Well, maybe the scale is not the same, but the scene with patrol and hide-and-seek in the thick Chernobyl grass you will definitely forget very soon. I don't want to live anymore. You're rushing through the abandoned house. Flight after flight of concrete stairs, scaring away the remnants of the nationalists with short bursts, you already see the back of the main creep's head in front of you, squeeze him into a corner, and then. The scoundrel puts a bullet in his skull. And this is, to put it mildly, unexpected. The fall of Black Hawk. In computer games, we have seen everything, seen how a thousand pieces of huge spaceships explode sinking giant highlands or explode entire planets. But, as it turns out, the coolest looking disaster is the scene in Call of Duty 4, where a helicopter falls between two crushed chefs, natural born killers. Even if you've been playing shooters for only a couple of years, you must have participated in a thousand professional assassination attempts with a sniper rifle. In Call of Duty this same scene differs from all others by such a life staging and naturalism that your palms sweat. Goodbye, America. The enemy is defeated and democracy triumphs? Not so. Literally 100 meters before the main creep, you suddenly see two Soviet long-range nuclear missiles rising from behind the horizon and flying westward. And then it's like that joke about there's no more America for you. The Great Race. The last level of Call of Duty 4 opens with the most gorgeous chase scene in the history of game building. Isn't it enough for you to just blow up 10 cars, 20 trucks and even one helicopter? Then blow up a tunnel, a bridge, a TV tower, and anything else that comes your way. To hell with it. Last bullet. While you, concussed and battered, are lying on the bridge and staring at the sky with a hazy look, 
the main villain and his friends are killing your wounded co-workers and shooting down the evacuation helicopter in front of your eyes. You are holding the last gun with the last bullet. You aim. Your pulse echoes in your temples. It's written on the fence, too and, of course, the moment that struck our entire editorial team to the core, a giant two-meter word, yes, yes, that's it, written all over the fence. The funniest thing is that in the game the most important plot scenes take place twice, against the background of this fence, so there can be no mistake.